in Dubai. He said he had to, he said he had to work. Now I'll call this meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order. I want to welcome everyone who has come out to the meeting tonight and also those who will be viewing the meeting on G10 television. Uh, to begin, I'd like to uh, have everybody stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance to be led by uh, Council Member Angela Washington, followed by the invocation by our City Attorney, John Carter. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our Heavenly Father, as always, we pause to give you thanks. Thanks for this beautiful day. Thanks for the privilege of living in this city of Jacksonville. And thanks for all your blessings that you so graciously bestow upon us, individually and as the city of Jacksonville. We pray as we enter this holiday season that each of us would be acutely reminded of the needs of others. That most of us live very, very comfortably and are so blessed. And that we find during this season, as hopefully throughout the year, that we can find ways to help meet those needs of others who are less fortunate than we. We give thanks and we pray for our military members who are serving us here and around the world. We pray for their anxious families, that you would be with them, as many of them are separated during this holiday season. And as always, we pray that your guidance and your direction would be with our mayor and with our council. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> <clears throat> Council, before you, you have a copy of the proposed agenda for tonight's meeting, I, I would entertain a motion to adopt, but also adding, um, well, actually taking off uh, presentation B and adding a new presentation there, which would be the uh, uh, River of Life uh, Church is, is making a donation to the city and put that in place of B, and also to add a resolution under cons or consent items, uh, B item number. Uh, we'll give it a number later, Ms. Madam Clerk. Um, we'll add it to the consent items. Pardon me, John? 4A. 4A, there you go. <laughs> we'll use 4A. And uh, this will be a resolution uh, authorizing an installment purchase by the city manager. Move approval. Second. Any discussion? Here, none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. All right. Uh, I'm going to come down and we're going to do a couple of presentations. <clears throat> <laughs> On October 24, 2015, officers from the Jacksonville Police Department Community Services Division held a Tim Cox fundraiser at the Jacksonville Red Robin location and over here in the uh, Jacksonville Mall. Uh, the event raised over $1,500 to benefit the North Carolina Law Enforcement Torch Run for Special Olympics. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. And on behalf of the Jacksonville Police Department and the Special Olympics, we are honored to present you 
uh, with this recognition for all the work that y'all did uh, and for, for joining us or, or helping us with this venture here and, pre, pre, you know, raising money for Special Olympics. What, what more worthy of a cause. Thank you yes, so sir. much, Mike. Thank you. Appreciate Our it. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, guys. It's very, very important that uh, good community or good uh, corporate citizens like uh, Red Robin gets involved with the community. That's, that's very good. Please pass that up your uh, chain there uh, to the owners and all that. We really do appreciate uh, the input. Next, I'd like to call my friend, Pastor Chris Phillips, up. And you also may have some of your folks with you from the River of Life Church. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. How you doing? Mike, how you doing? Good to see you. Slide, slide down that way just yeah. There you go. Yep. We'll slide down this way. It's in, it's in the works. works. It's back with the uh, Mr. Pierce. He's, he's, he's got to modify something. Thanks again. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Uh, it's Christmas. It's Christmas. <laughs> it's Christmas. The city is very grateful. Uh, for the continued help that we could we get uh, the support we have from the congregation of River of Life Ministries over there on Gun Branch Road, y'all do a great job. Talking about corporate citizens, you're you're uh, citizens of faith who who help your community, and it's so greatly appreciated. This year marks the tenth year in a row that the River of Life Church has provided a donation to help us with much of the you know some of the community needs that we have here. Um, over the years, the donations have been a blessing to our citizens in so many ways, including community safety programs and providing life support and life-saving equipment, such as defib defibrillators, um, and those have been used uh, by some of our first responding units uh, very effectively and have saved several lives in our community. Uh, more recently, the donation has been used to provide recreational opportunities for children in our community who might otherwise not have had the chance to participate. Uh, this includes programs such as summer camp and summer enrichment programs, field trips, before and after school programs, and sports opportunities. And on behalf of the city of Jacksonville, I do want to say that I, I, I very much appreciate what you do, every one of you. And this is a, this is a congregation effort. We just talk about a community effort, but it's a... It's a community, it's a congregation slash community effort. We thank you very much for being a part of our community. And uh, with that, uh, you said you had something you want to present with me. Yeah, yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Ah, there we go. This is uh, a check to the city for $10,000. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. And then, of course, as always, I have the real check right here <laughs> that you can actually deposit. We're very thankful that, once again, God's blessed us this year, and we're able to come back again to the city council, to you, Mr. Mayor, and present this as uh, a gift to the city. We know that it helps underprivileged kids, and it gives them something uh, during the summer, after school programs and just summer programs, that bless them and help them. And so it's our pleasure to be able to do this. And it reminds us that during this season, uh, God is generous and God gave, mm -hmm. and he didn't give a gift of money. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. on behalf of the congregation and all of our people all year long who serve the Lord and who work uh, so diligently in the church, uh, we're very, very happy to be able to once again present this to the city and we look forward to seeing you again next year. Amen. Well, thank you very much, Pastor Phillips. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. 
I know my little gift back to you, you guys, is pales in comparison, but it is, uh, you know, we do appreciate what you do for us. And, and we prepared a, a nice plaque. I hope, hopefully you'll place this maybe somewhere like in the foyer in your, your church, your sanctuary, or even in your office or wherever you choose to put it. But this is a certificate of recognition that we'd like to give you for, for your continued support of this community and, and, and the wonderful gifts that you give to us. And I, I certainly do appreciate it. And this comes from all of you. And thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Rankin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's a nice check. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Just hang on a second. Hold on. I know I got these pictures. It's a photo. It's a photo Now, you need for them to form lines, Ready, or you got them? You need them? to get closer, or is that camera bright? All right, let's do this. Three lines this time. We got enough women in the front, men. Um, Carmen, why don't you come up and get this other uh, real check from you? You can stand on the other side here. You need to get in here, too. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. It's a wonderful gift. And we'll certainly let you know how well that money is going to be used as far as helping the community. <clears throat> the last presentation tonight uh, I have is a, is a, pres a promotion. Somebody's getting promoted in our fire, our fire and emergency services. I'd like to ask... Uh, well, let's see here. We got Chief Yanaros here. Who else we have from the fire department? Okay, I see him now. I'm still stunned over that ten thousand dollar check. <laughs> Fellas, how y'all doing? All right, so we're going to promote us a. a Assistant fire, uh, a fire, assistant fire marshal to a division chief, right? That's right. All right. That's a big one. That's a big move. Sean Hayes, will you and your family come join us? Anybody and everybody you want to bring? They, I know they're proud of you. Hey, Sean. We recently had a vacancy created in the rank of division chief at the Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services. There were applications received and uh, candidates participated in an examination or extensive process consisting of formal presentations and a series of oral interviews. And Assistant Fire Marshal Sean Hayes was selected for promotion to the rank of division chief of the uh, safety and standards. And that, uh, with that, we're going to administer an oath uh, and I uh, assume somebody's going to hold the uh, Bible for you. What? Okay. So you'll put your, there you go. And if you, re uh, your left hand, left hand goes on the Bible, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Sean Hayes. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. <clears throat> that I will be alert and vigilant. I will be alert and vigilant. In performing my duties. In performing my duties. As a division chief, as a division chief of the city of Jacksonville, 
for the city of Jacksonville. Fire and emergency services. Fire and emergency services. That I will not be influenced. That I will not be influenced. In any matter on account of. In any matter on account of. Personal bias or prejudice. Personal bias or prejudice. That I will support and maintain. That I will support and maintain. The Constitution and laws of the United States. The Constitution and laws of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. And impartially. And impartially. Discharge. Discharge. And execute the duties of my office. Execute the duties of my office. As a division chief. As a division chief. Of the city of Jacksonville. The city of Jacksonville. Fire and emergency services. Fire and emergency services. According to the best of my skills, according to the best of my skills, abilities and, abilities and judgment. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Okay, so we have some hardware for you. Let's see. Y'all have some pinning and badging to do. Okay. Can't see her. Can't see your wife. <laughs> and the mother. <laughs> hey, let's have one more with uh, Sean and the uh, personnel of the department. <laughs> and the mayor office. And you can get five minutes. You guys want to Uh, good night. All right. We are going to come to our, uh, well, first off, I'm going to, uh, I know a lot of you are here for the uh, uh, presentations, and I'm going to take just a, a brief pause. If you want to hightail it, that's a good time to do it. And uh, I know some of you probably want to go back to work. Or... <laughs> Don't everybody I was being facetious, by the way. <laughs> 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 That's 
good. That boy, this boy's doing good. He's 10 years. Uh, 10 years on the job. 10 years. Have they started the groundbreaking for the new yet? Have they started the groundbreaking for their new church, River of Life? I don't think so. I guess I better turn my machine on. All right, we'll go back in session, and uh, next item is a public comment section. And I have one person signed up, uh, and uh, if someone else came in, uh, please, by all means, I'll call on anybody. But I have Kevin O'Connor's our first speaker, signed up. So, Kevin. Good evening, City Council. Been a while. Kevin O'Connor, 210 Newport Drive. Uh, North Topsail Beach does not need the Jacksonville uh, sales tax dollars. Uh, Fred Burns, the current mayor of North Topsail Beach, in his uh, candidate profile stated that uh, phase one is in the bottom of New River Inlet, phase five is incomplete, and the Beach We Nourishment Program is $17 million in the hole. That's Jacksonville sales tax dollars that's sitting down there. Um, county kind of Screwed the city of Jacksonville three and a half years ago. If you look at the candidates' form um, prior to the election, the candidates clearly stated that there was absolutely nothing that they could cut out of the county budget. Fast forward about five, six months, uh, county commissioners needed some quick cash, so what they did is they changed the sales tax distribution to ad valorem in order to get some money in their pockets, as well as uh, North Topsail Beach and Swansboro and Jacksonville was on the short end of the stick for a few million dollars. Um, the other reason it needs to be switched to the um, ad valorem is if we take the uh, imaginary drive around the city of Jacksonville, and we're going to start at West, or, uh, uh, Western Extension and Gum Branch. We have Lowe's Foods. We have the uh, McDonald's. We have Dunkin' Donuts. Drive down a little bit, you have the Wash House. Go down to Kmart, you have the new strip mall in there. Uh, if you drive down Henderson, uh, down to Marine Boulevard. Mike, your place is right there with the subway. You have Advance Auto. Down the street, you have O'Reilly's Auto Parts. Let's go uh, Marine Boulevard up towards Yop Road. You have a new Family Dollar going in. Some new places up in uh, Yop Road. You have Family Tire that's going in there. You have a new Lou place. A couple other places in there. Nothing along Lejeune Boulevard, but let's go up Western Boulevard. And Western Boulevard Extension is pretty much booming. You have uh, Hobby Lobby. You have Wally World is going in there. The hotels are coming online. Um, you have Burlington Coat Factory. There's a new shoe store in there. You have old Chicago strip mall that's in there, and I'm sure there's several others in there that I have missed as far as commercial properties, which is the second best that you want as far as sales tax, or uh, I'm sorry, as a revenue source is concerned. So the county is benefiting with the city of Jacksonville being the economic engine of the county with the sales tax dollars as well as the commercial businesses that are coming into place. So the residents of Jacksonville and the voters in particular, they need to understand that the city of Jacksonville needs to get those sales tax dollars since obviously the county in North Topsail Beach doesn't need it. Simply put, North Topsail Beach, the uh, city manager stated that 84% of the residences are second homes. No, they're not. There are for-profit businesses down there many in excess of a million dollars a year for sales tax revenue, and they're wasting our money. Thank you very much, and everybody have a great Christmas. Thank, Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Merry Christmas. Anyone else uh, come in after the sheet was taken up? Okay. Uh, next, we uh, have to approve our uh, minutes from the November 17, 2015 special workshop and the November 17, 2015 a uh, regular meeting and also the uh, consent items uh, 1 through 4B. 4A. Mayor, I move that we approve this uh, special workshop meeting minutes of November 17th and the regular meeting minutes of that same day to be approved as presented. 
and the consent, and the consent, and the consent item. items as presented, including item 4A. Okay, thank you. Second. I have a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? That will bring us to uh, our first item, well, actually, item number 5. <clears throat> And this will be a uh, rezoning uh, request, a, a map amendment. And it's a rezoning from a, a RMF uh, L low density to a corridor commercial 2739 Richlands Highway. Ryan King be presenting this item. Good evening, Mayor Council. Um, items five and six before you tonight are both rezonings. They are adjacent to one another, so you're going to hear some similar information. For both items, in fact, I may make agenda item six a little bit brief based on our presentation here in number five tonight. So the first rezoning is for a 0.49 acre tract of land located on Richlands Highway. This will be just to the west of the intersection of Hickory Road and Richlands Highway. Uh, the subject parcel here is a wooded tract of land uh, closest to the gas station that's located. I'm sorry located at the intersection across from the Tractor Supply Center. So here's the Tractor Supply Center gas station at Hickory and Richlands Highway. So the subject parcel, 0.49 acres. Uh, the, the property owner, David Ray Hemby, has requested that it be rezoned from the RMF LD, the Residential Multifamily Low Density Rezone, uh, Zone, to Corridor Commercial. As you can see here on the screen before you, that that's pretty much the area that surrounds the property, the, the pinkish color. Um, so basically it would be changed to Cordo Commercial, <clears throat> excuse me, along with the rest of the area. Uh, the next item, agenda item six, will be for this parcel here next door. So it follows the Camel land use plan that identifies this area for neighborhood commercial. I'm sorry, for um, regional commercial. And the staff has analyzed the rezoning, believe that it follows our plans. In typical fashion, we did not require a transportation impact analysis. As rezonings, we typically push that out till the development plan comes forward. So we will not be asking for a traffic impact analysis with the rezoning. So if approved, the property would be rezoned to quarter commercial. And I'll be happy to answer any questions that the city council may have at this time. Council, any questions around this time? Okay. We're going to uh, recess the council meeting and open the public hearing that's required on this matter. Is there anyone present that wishes to speak to this matter? So please indicate by Mr. Bailey. If you'll state your name and address for the record. Uh, Warren Bailey. Uh, my office 405 Western Boulevard in Jacksonville. Mainly, I just want to tell everybody hello and uh, <laughs> tell you how much we appreciate what the council does and to tell you that Southwest Jacksonville is strong. Our sales are good, and we have some very exciting things that are going to happen out there. And so if you can talk any of these people who want to go to Western Boulevard and so forth, if you'll bring them out our way, <laughs> we just want you to know that we're doing good and we've got a lot to offer out there. But again, I thank you for all that you do. Appreciate if you would vote for Mr. Henry's property tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Others? Seeing no one, I will recess the, <coughs> close the public hearing and reopen the uh, council meeting. Uh, Councilor, you're being asked to uh, rec uh, to consider the proposed rezoning. Mayor Phillips, I'll move that we um, that we approve the rezoning request based on findings of fact A through J being found in the affirmative, and that the rezoning advances the public interest by creating more development opportunities and making the zoning consistent with our future land use map. Have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have item number six, and this is the other piece to that. That's a public hearing map amendment for a rezoning from a residential model family low density to corridor commercial 2757 Richlands Highway. Ryan. Thank you, Mayor. 
So the adjoining property, 1.03 acres currently within the um, city's ETJ. So as with the previous development site or future development site, if it um, basically would have to be annexed to receive the city services, which we would expect that they would to obtain the water and sewer and police and fire protection at this location. Um, basically the same request uh, to go to follow the Camel land use plan to regional commercial and currently zoned RMF LD, it would change to quarter commercial to follow the same track that you just rezone immediately adjacent to. Be happy to answer any questions that you may have at this time. Council, any questions, Ryan, and on this? One other thing to point out, the planning board did recommend approval of both of these rezonings as well as staff. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Questions? Okay. <clears throat> right. We'll recess the regular council meeting up and required public hearing on this matter. Is there anyone wishes to speak to this matter? Okay. My name is Warren Bailey. Uh, if you see the map, this does complete a little bit of our puzzle out there. This is one of the few tracks that's remaining. Uh, I think Mr. Yop's property across the street from us is another big parcel that is going to play into the overall master plan of the shopping area in the southwest area. Right now we have probably well over 100 and some odd acres that have been developed or in the development. There's close to four or 500,000 square feet that have been developed and are in the process of being developed. And I cannot tell you the number of jobs that have been created in the Southwest community. And so uh, we're proud of it. And we're so proud that the city council did the things that they did to help us as far as the water and the sewer and things of that nature that is such an integral part when you start trying to develop a piece of <clears throat> commercial property. I, I'm a commercial guy, and I've always said that I think that the commercial uh, adds as many jobs so many times as the, you've heard me say this many times, but so much as the industrial. And when you get the commercial people to go there, whether it's a McDonald's or whether it's a, a Walmart or whatever it is, uh, these people do have the jobs. If you go to any of these, Mike, you go to your restaurant. I mean, these are the people who have the jobs. And so anything that we can do, I think, to get our commercial complex growing and expand our city limits and get the utilities to it and help these, the people who are trying to develop the commercial, I think that is, along with the residential, but I do think that is the growth of our county. And thank you so much. Tell you what, it really looks good out there, too. Really Thank you does. so much. Thank you. We appreciate Thank all you've done. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak to this matter? I'm going to uh, close the public hearing in this matter, reconvene the regular council meeting, and, Councilor, you're being asked to consider the rezoning. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we approve the rezoning based on the findings of facts uh, A through J being found in the affirmative, that the rezoning advances the public interest. And it also will make the zoning, uh, will uh, make our land use plans more consistent. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> that brings us to agenda item number seven. And this is a special use permit, a type three site plan for a telecommunication tower at, eight, at 900 Ramsey Road. And Jeremy Smith will be presenting this item. And it's a quasi-judicial hearing, so at this time I'll uh, swear you in. Do you swear the information you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of the Council, uh, you have before you a special use permit and Type 3 site plan for a proposed telecommunication tower at 900 Ramsey Road. <coughs> You'll note the location before you on the aerial on the screen. <coughs> This project has been submitted by Towercom 4 LLC. It is on a 2.9 acre track, again at 900 Ramsey Road. This property is currently zoned RSF 20, as are the adjacent properties to the north and west and across Ramsey Road. There is a um, property in Oslo County's jurisdiction uh, to the immediate east. This is the existing zoning. I'm sorry. This is the uh, lane use, which is all low-density residential. 
the zoning um, RS10 across Ramsey Road at the corner of Totem Drive. Before you is the site plan. Uh, city staff has reviewed this site plan and the special use permit and have found it to meet all our standards. Uh, the planning board recommended approval of this project and at that time there were two conditions that have been addressed since that time and now this is being recommended to you without condition with uh, findings of fact A through, G, A through G being found in the affirmative. Representatives from TowerCom of TowerCom 4 are in attendance and will be here to address any questions that you may have as well as staff. Two, two additional comments. Uh, you will notice that this is a monopole and you'll notice it says it's 145 feet with 150 uh, to the highest uh, appurtenances. Thank you. As the standard practice, we did review this with the airbase. They had no issues with it. It is not within our 100 foot overlay, flight overlay pattern. So I just want to make sure the record understands that the military did review this. What were the two conditions the planning board? We were, uh, were waiting for confirmation with uh, Marine Corps Air Station New River for lighting requirements, and there will be a red warning light placed on there and uh, fire access to the site. Um, the, the plan at the time did not show the uh, proper width of the fire access, and it does now for, uh, for a fire truck. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, Chair? Thank you. Is there anyone present who wishes to speak to this matter? If you would please approach the uh, podium. <clears throat> Ma'am, if you would please uh, raise your uh, right hand and uh, you swear the information you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you out? I do. Would you please state your name and address for the record? Dana Pelizzeri, Pennington Law Firm, 1501 Main Street, Columbia, South Carolina, 29209. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Um, first, um, I just would like to, because this is a quasi-judicial hearing, I just wanted to go ahead and submit um, to the council um, a full copy of our application that had previous, previously been submitted to the planning department as well as the revised construction drawings, um, which do address the conditions that Mr. Smith spoke about. Um, there's also a letter from the property owner who cannot be present tonight um, indicating that obviously that he does support the telecommunications tower. And lastly, um, there is a real estate impact study that we had prepared um, as well as an affidavit from Michael Berkowitz who prepared the um, study which um, supports our notion that the telecom, telecommunications tower will not negatively impact the surrounding property. Um, much of what I had prepared, which was just a short um, PowerPoint presentation, um, does duplicate what Mr. Smith said. I'd be glad to go through um, the information again, or if you all have any questions, I'd be glad to answer any questions as well. But our application, which was submitted, does go through and um, verify and confirm that we do meet all the requirements of the special use permit, as well as the findings of fact that are required. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much for that information. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on this matter? Hearing no one, I will close the public hearing and I will reconvene the council meeting. Council, you're being asked to approve the, uh, rec the uh, site plan special use permit. Mayor Phillips, I'll make the motion uh, that council approves the special use permit and site plans with findings of facts A through G being found in the affirmative. And all previous recommended conditions have been addressed. Second. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. All right. So we're going to come now to our report section of tonight's meeting. And I'm going to start with. Uh, are you ready? I'm sorry. No public comment. Uh, nobody here. Nobody here. Nobody's here. Okay. No report this evening. Thank you, Mayor. Very quickly, I have some very good news for us. Um, the widening of Henderson Drive between Gum Branch Road and NC 53 Western Boulevard Extension, as we call it, um, will be funded. 
construction is scheduled to begin in 2020, but uh, we believe that uh, that we can expedite that process, and that's what we are working towards. So that's uh, that's very exciting news. Um, also, the last segment of 24 um, in Sampson County um, will will connect uh, Camp Lejeune to um, to um, Fort Bragg. And that's a significant uh, project that we're very excited about and for our uh, military partners for the connectivity between the two bases and joint training and, and just the mobility uh, between the two bases. So we're very excited. It's very good news for us. So thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, I would just like to, um, to thank Chief Pinero um, this past Saturday. He participated as the guest speaker at the ecumenical prayer service that was held at St. Julia Amy Zion Church in a collaboration of pairing the public with law enforcement in terms of addressing violence in the community and getting law enforcement more involved. So kudos goes out to Chief Unero for a yeoman's job well done. Thank you, Thomas. Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment on tonight's uh, <clears throat> A swearing in of Chief Hayes. I noticed when I was reading through the uh, agenda that the opening was created when Division Chief Susanna Williams resigned to accept a position as fire chief for Carborough. Oh, yeah. So I thought that was very uh, complimentary of our staff that their people are moving up and opening up ways. Uh, I thought that was that was very exciting. Also, right before I came to the meeting tonight, I saw on TV. Um, just a commercial, a random commercial of, a, I think it was some kind of finance company, but they were using the fountain as their background, as, uh, you know, they were doing their commercial, but that was their yeah, background. I, I thought that was pretty yeah. Uh, yeah. First bank ad does admirable, it. I guess. First bank yeah. does it every day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was on TV, yeah. But anyway, about that? that was pretty neat. But that's all, Mayor. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Randy. Well, since this is our last meeting before uh, Christmas and the holidays, I want to wish each of y'all a, a Merry Christmas. I'm sure we'll be seeing each other out and about town at uh, various functions, but uh, if not, uh, Merry Christmas to each of you. Merry Christmas to you. Thank you. And, and to the staff, too. I don't mean to exclude y'all. Thank you. Um, I, the only thing I have is uh, I just hope everybody gets out and enjoys this warm spring weather that we're about to have. And, um, and I... Uh, bring the sentiments of uh, everyone having a, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And Dr. Woodruff. Mayor, members of council, uh, several items. We know that over the Christmas holidays there will be uh, uh, students out of school. Mm -hmm. I'd like to remind parents that if you're looking for something for your children to do, the City Recreation Program does offer what we call the Polar Olympics. I'm not sure polar is the right title since we're going to be experiencing 74 degrees this coming weekend, but hopefully at Christmas time it will be cooler. But we offer programs from 7.30 a.m. until 6 p.m. for ages 6 through 11. So if you're looking for something for your children to do, you need someone to take care of them in a safe environment, please call the City Recreation Program. Those programs will be offered every day that the city is open during the Christmas holidays, which is basically almost all of them. Mm -hmm. That does bring up the fact that City Hall is closed the 24th and 25th. That's Thursday and Friday. Okay. That means, once again, residential garbage will be modified. Monday service will be Monday. Tuesday service will be Tuesday. Wednesday service will be, the Wednesday service will be what normally is Thursday and Friday. We also would remind persons that after Christmas, when you decide that you'd like to do something with your tree, please put it out. We do recycle those Christmas trees. We would ask, though, make sure your wife takes all of the lights and ornaments off the light, off the tree, before she, notice she, places it at the curb. Last thing that we would like to um, uh, mention is this coming Thursday, uh, city staff members will be volunteering to ring the bell at Salvation Army out at the Yop Road Walmart. If you're out that way and you see some uh, people adorned in various uh, Santa Claus hats, including possibly some council members, just we have a slogan. If you want us to sing a Christmas carol, 
put in a dollar. If you don't want us to sing in a Christmas carol, put in two dollars. Okay. Mayor and Council, we also would like to commend to you the city staff for a phenomenal winter fest this past weekend. Had probably three to 4,000 people out, sledding and ice skating and pictures with Santa, as well as the lighting of the tree. We appreciate the fact that the council and the mayor provide the funds so that this is a free activity for our citizens. And as always, Merry Christmas and thank you for the leadership you provide this community. Thank you. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you, John. With well, that, uh, I've entertained a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? All right.